today I'm going to go over how to bevel the edges of your copper plate. And the reason that we bevel our edges is so that when we are putting the plate through the press with our paper, we don't want the sharp edges of the plate to cut through our paper or the blankets. So we're going to um, bevel them a little bit so that their edges go down instead of having that 90 degree sharp edge. And the type of copper that I'm using is quite a thin uh, gauge as we call it. So I'm gonna be careful that I'm not applying too much pressure because I might bend the copper. Be careful to not drop your copper. If it lands on a corner, it might actually bend that corner. So just be careful uh, to take good care of your plate. And that being said, this plate actually does have quite a few scratches on it. Um, so when deciding what is going to be the front of your plate, try to pick the side with the least amount of scratches, but I will show you a way that we can um, buff those out. So I'm gonna start with this, um, it's called a bastard file. And this one has lines that actually um, crisscross. So lines going this way and lines going this way. And that's actually going to remove quite a bit of material, but it's gonna leave these kind of like rough uh, kind of teeth behind in the copper. This is another type of file um, where the lines are only going in one direction. And this is a little bit finer, so that will help me remove some of the teeth that's left behind by this other file. Um, this is also a tool that you can use for um, beveling your edges. Um, I kind of like to use all these tools um, together, and I'll show you how to use them in a second. Um, and you'll also need a scraper. So this tool has very sharp edges and a burnisher, and this one is quite smooth. So to start, I'm gonna take this larger file and I'm going to bring my plate over to the edge. And I don't want, you know, a lot to hang off, just, just enough uh, so that I can apply pressure with my hand to keep the plate in place. You can also use clamps to hold it down, um, but I usually have a lot of luck with just holding it down with my hand. Um, and then you're gonna wanna hold your file in your other hand and start at about a 45 degree angle. And it's gonna make a lot of noise. And I'm basically pulling down in one direction across the entirety of the plate. And so you might actually get some little particles of copper land on the floor. Just be sure that you uh, sweep those up afterwards. So once you feel like you've made some progress, you can check it out. It might be kind of hard to see. But I'm looking to make sure that this angle that I'm filing into my plate goes all the way through to this side. So sometimes you'll be able to see that in this part of the plate, the top of it is um, like slightly filed down, but that there is still this 90 degree ed edge that comes up from the bottom. So I'm just looking to make sure that I got all the way through. And I can see that I did on this side, but that this side still has a little bit to go. And this copper is actually quite easy to file since it is so thin. And I do feel like edges can be, can have personal preferences. So if you wanna go in a little bit further, you can angle your file to about 30 degrees 
and that will give you a little bit of a wider edge. nice thick enough edge that your edge goes all the way to the back of the plate you're ready to move on to the next tool so this tool as well this was kind of developed as like I don't want to say cheater <laughs> but, um, I guess to help you know make this process a little bit easier I find though that sometimes if I'm holding it uh, at the wrong angle, it'll actually scratch the surface of my plate. So I, I kind of just use this in tandem with the other tools that I use. So I already created my angle with this tool and this is actually, I'm kind of holding it very close to the end of it and pressing down and then pulling along. And it actually takes off quite a bit of material, which is nice. Sometimes I find it does weird things at the corners, like, because every time I grab onto it here, it's kind of like chipping out a little piece. But it's actually quite smoothed it out. Um, so that's an option that you can use, you know, maybe you want to make it a little bit finer with this one first. Um, make sure to round your edges so that those sharp corners don't nick you while you're working on your plate. Um, also be careful, I am always like rubbing my finger along the edge of the plate. Um, be careful when you're doing that, um, that you don't cut yourself. Sometimes to take off that sharper edge, I'll run my file 90 degrees along the edge of the plate. Just right now smoothing out those nasty um, teeth marks left behind by this tool. And making sure that my edge is at a nice angle. Alright, so before we ever used this tool, these were the tools we used to smooth things out. Um, so I hold the scraper, hold on, let me figure it out, like this. So my thumb on top and my hand, fingers curled underneath so that one of the sharp edges is facing down. And then I hold it at an angle and I drag it along that edge. And this is, true to its name, scraping off those weird teeth that were left behind. And so this is a good point where you could be like, oh, actually, that's not really getting out all those edges so much. I want to go back in with this and make it nice and smooth. It's up to you which tools you like using, but we do have a couple of these that are around for you to experiment with. All right, so that's feeling nice and smooth. Um, and then our burnisher is, um, for the finishing touch. And again, I hold it um, thumb, thumb on top and then fingers curled underneath. And I press it against the edge and I rub the smooth side back and forth. Be careful that this tip doesn't scratch your plate. along the edges. 
So now, maybe you can see that my edge is really nice and shiny. It's really nice and smooth. And the reason that we smooth it out like this is because when we're inking up our plate, we don't want ink to get caught in the borders of our plate. Um, we wanna be able to wipe ink off of these areas. And the smoother your edges are, the better time you're gonna have. Um, and I started to pay attention to this corner a little bit, but you can round it as much as you like. Again, it's a matter of personal preference. I know people that like a really nice round corner and that's just a part of the aesthetic of their plate. So there you can see that edge is quite rounded. All right, so once you've finished one side, you have three more sides to go. All right, let's go. When you've finished beveling all your edges and they're nice and smooth, you're ready to put your plate backer on. So I have some sticky drawer liner that you can get from Home Depot or the dollar store or Lowe's, Walmart. Um, and I also have my X-Acto blade. And there's a couple ways you can do this. You can put your plate down, trace around it, cut it out, and then stick it on the back. Or to get a really nice, crispy edge, I will actually unroll part of it. Place my plate down like this. Take the X-Acto blade and then cut following the edges of the plate. And the plate backer is going to protect the back of our plate when we put it in the acid bath from being exposed to the acid and causing what we call foul biting, which means basically just eating into open areas of the plate and causing unevenness in the plate. I'm just gonna cut off these sticky ends. And then roll up the unused portion so that somebody else can use it. Um, now you'll see there's some air bubbles back here. I want to do my best to try and smooth those out. Just got a piece of mat board. And so I'm kind of pressing, trying to smooth it out. If you have to, you can always like lift it up again and then smooth it out. The air bubbles shouldn't affect anything too much as long as they're not close to the edge. If they're close to the edge, acid might actually be able to seep in underneath your plate and cause foul biting that way. So it's good to make sure that all the air bubbles are out of the back of your plate. And there we go, much better. At this point, you should turn on the hot plate in case it's not already on. I mentioned um, that at a certain point we would try to get out some of the scratches on the plate. Um, so this is a good time to do that. I have some very fine steel wool that I am going to start with and then we are going to polish our plate. Um, so I'm gonna move kind of in a circular direction and you can see already that it's starting to 
shine up really nice. If you scratch your plate at any point, um, you can just come back and buff it out with some of this finer steel wool. Um, so I'm gonna move along the plate like this until I've burnished the entire surface. arm muscles, that printmaker's arm that we're building. All right, so when you feel like you've gotten most of the scratches out, there's a couple spots where there are like quite deep scratches, um, but I'm not gonna worry about those too much. Um, oftentimes I like a little bit of uh, chatter on the plate. So now we're gonna need to buff this up to a nice shine. So I have some Brasso here, small piece of felt. I'm gonna put a little dab of it on there. And then again, in a circular motion, shine up my plate, just like you would polish your silverware. And you're, you can see it's starting to turn dark. You're gonna keep moving in a circular motion until the, we can put a little bit more on too, um, until the brasso starts to get really dark in color. Kind of stinks, so if you want to turn on the ventilation, you are welcome to. All right, so starting to look nice and dark. I'm just gonna take off the excess with some paper towel. Now we're ready to degrease our plate um, in preparation for applying hard ground. So to degrease your plate, you're going to need vinegar and salt, whiting, some paper towel, and then denatured alcohol to finish up. So I'm gonna hold my plate and squirt a bit of this vinegar and salt on my plate if I can. Oh, there we go. And then your goal is to make a, a paste. So I'm going to apply kind of medium amount of whiting can always add more if I need to. And take a little folded piece of paper towel and start to mix this up into a paste. If you need to add more, you can. There we go. I'm gonna move around the plate. And this is going to remove all the greasiness from the Brasso that I had used and from my hands. so that when we apply the hard ground, it's not just gonna creep in on the edges, it's gonna lay nice and flat on our plate. So degreasing is a really important step that you don't want to forget. So now I got this nice paste going, making sure 
to get all the corners as well as the middle of the plate. All right, so when you feel like you've had a good lather going, you can wash the plate off. And this is a good way to tell whether your plate is degreased or not. Um, when you put water on the plate, if it kind of like creeps in from the edges, like I can see happening on my plate, you're going to want to degrease again. So I'm going to, and it's just a good uh, habit to get into degreasing at least twice. I'm going to clean off the water. And start again. So that's much better. I can see that the water is going to all edges of the plate and it's not creeping off from the edges. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna let it drip off. Dry it off with some paper towel. Don't forget to clean up any mess. And then once your plate has dried, you can take a little bit of denatured alcohol, put it on a piece of paper towel, and this is gonna be one last degreasing before we apply hard ground. Don't forget to turn on the ventilation fan when you're applying the hard ground. So place your nice degreased plate onto the upside down cups in the kitty litter and try to get it as flat as you can. Um, the kitty litter is here to catch any um, spillage that might occur. You're gonna also want to wear a pair of gloves to do this because hard ground is a bit of a nasty chemical. And then you can either use a like two inch sponge brush or I like to use um, just a regular two inch chip brush. There's hard ground in the yellow cabinets. Um, but I'll have some in a glass jar up for you to use. And I just poured some in a little cup right now. Um, so you're gonna wanna get a little bit on your brush and you don't want to apply too thick of a coat. Um, you just want it to be a nice, thin, kind of coffee covered coat. And you're gonna start from the top, make your way across.
If you miss a spot, that's okay. You can go back over it. Um, but you want to minimize, uh, you know, going over the whole thing a bunch of times because uh, that'll give you a thicker layer. So you can see that that's kind of a nice, like, coffee colored layer. I can try to remove some in the spots that it might have been too thick. And then we're going to move it over to the hot plate. So make sure that the hot plate is nice and hot. It gets really hot, so don't touch it too much. Um, put down a piece of newsprint on the hot plate and make sure you turn on the ventilation. And then bring your plate over to the hot plate. And it shouldn't take too long. If the hot plate is sufficiently hot enough, you should see some smoke start to rise off the plate. Um, I can see that the shiny areas are starting to turn um, a dull color. And you don't want to like put it down, walk away, um, and come back half an hour later because it will actually melt the backing on your plate. If there were any streaks on your plate, um, they will even out so you don't have to worry too much about them. your plate is sufficiently cooked, um, you can take it off, turn off the ventilation fan. Um, if nobody else is using the hot plate, you can also turn it off. So don't forget to turn off the hot plate, especially if you're working here late at night. Once you've allowed your plate to cool, you can kind of tap around the edges of the plate just to make sure that it's fully dry. If there's areas that are still wet, you can pop it back on the hot plate. But if it's dry, um, you're ready to move forward with transferring your drawing and starting to scribe onto your plate. Again, make sure that you turn off the hot plate and turn off any of the ventilation and also um, clean up and put away all your tools. Mm -hmm.